So, obviously, I didn't get this finished the other day. Um, I have since found Lucy's shovel, which is really cool. Where did I put that? It's important to have the right tools for the job. So the other day we were clearing this out. I actually filled that wheelbarrow with all the mud and my kids tipped all the mud out. But that's what kids are for. And if I didn't leave it there, they wouldn't have tipped it out. So it's my fault. So the idea is that you would do this at the start when you put your system in. You wouldn't be cleaning it up how many months later? Now, if you had a trenching shovel, you'd probably better do this a lot quicker. But I don't have a trenching shovel. And a lot of guys and girls at home wouldn't have a trenching shovel, so they're not gonna have all the tools to, there to do this. So you do the best you can. And see the soil's quite moist. This valve box hole has basically been a, a dam for any time it rains, all the water just ends up in here. So I said the other day that we probably need to put two valve boxes over the top of this. So that would be one. And that gives us full access to the valves. This is a bit bigger than it needs to be. And that would give us full access to that bull valve. So to be able to turn that on and off. Um, I'm not sure if we're gonna go with that, but. That would be the little valve box setup. Yeah, that's the best way to do it. So I'm gonna dig that out a bit more with an actual adult size shovel or spade, whatever it is. So when you're digging this out, just be careful. Um, you've obviously got a lot of work that you've done with your wires. This hole traditionally would have been dug a bit bigger to start with. Where are we going? There we go. So. So what we would have done, and if we did this properly, we would have done, and this is probably a good way to show you how to clean up your valve box more than how to install it from scratch. You just want to get, you don't want mud necessarily all around every bit or leaves. So I'm just getting it all clear so that we can surround it with some aggregate or some Jurgen bags. So a bit of a story about that. I'm not sure if I talked about it the other day, but <laughs> that bag there, is a Jürgen bag. So before we owned a landscape supplies yard, we had customers, you know, wanting to buy bags of rocks to put in the bottom of their boxes. So, you know, water pros in an inner city location. Um, there's not a lot of landscape supply yards right where we are. There's some like in the Eastern suburbs. So the theory was we'd have those bags in stock and people could come and get some rocks when they bought the irrigation. The guy that suggested its name, well his name's Jason, but his business is called Jürgen Landscaping. So, as a tip of the hat to the idea, we call them Jürgen bags. Um, I guess you'll probably start to see that kind of behavior from me more and more. I like that nostalgia and tip of the hat stuff. That's why we called our truck Thomas. Um, yeah. I don't know what it is about me. Maybe it's just I'm a Disney kid at heart. Here we go. So this whole manifold is actually, I'm almost able to lift, well, I'm able to lift the whole thing up. So <clears throat> what I'm probably gonna do is try and lift it up and just push all that dirt out. There we go. That's a much easier way to clean it. So that's all in a, in a position that we could probably tip those Jürgen rocks in.
would have been handy if I had a pair of scissors here. Oh. I wonder if the kids have scissors lying around. You may remember the uh, Sid Chrome scissors from one of my other videos. These are good scissors. No. We should sell them at Water Pro. All right. So carefully, you want to fill up that void, but not overfill it. So that's a, I don't know, that would have probably been a 20 kilo bag. And that fills that pretty well. So then we can just place that over the, the box once every, everything's in there. At the moment, that's sitting quite high. The reason it's quite high is the, the pipes on the other side of it. So if we can, we kind of, you know, if we can get the, the back of that, we'll be at a point where we could mulch up to it. Uh, in a, a situation where you don't want to see the valve box at all, you could actually sit it lower than the level of the soil and cover the, the valve box lid with mulch. I'm not going to do that here because I don't care about seeing the valve box, uh, especially considering we make so much content. I want to be able to access it if we need to. So we'll mark some holes and we'll cut them out. When you're cutting a valve box, you don't want to cut more than you need, otherwise you're gonna get the risk of that dirt ingressing the valve box. So, um, probably need a cut around there, and a couple of those. So, you can attack a valve box a number of different ways. You can use a saw that cuts plastic. You can use a hole saw that cuts plastic. Uh, on the residential valve boxes you could get away with a um, steak knife or a high quality bread knife from your kitchen if you can get away with that uh, or a grinder if you want to get really extreme uh, I'm going to use this hole saw because I think it's going to give us a nice clean cut You want to get the plastic from a hole saw out pretty much straight away if you can. Um, sometimes they'll get hot if you've cut a lot and they'll kind of melt and get stuck. So that's going to fall down over that. And then we're going to do one on there, there, there. And there. So what I'm doing, I need to drill it high enough that it, that it drills into the plastic so that the drill catches, otherwise I'm just spinning and trying to work it out. 
but I don't want to do it so high that it lets too much in. So on the top of that seems about right. I'm level with that. All right. So if that's done properly, that should just fit straight over here. Now you'll see those coils are sitting quite high. This is a manual turning off and on assistance tool, not required. Uh, we might need to raise the box a little bit so that the lid fits over those solenoid valves. Oh, that's all right. And that's that. So in a commercial situation, you'd backfill, you'd put plastic around here to stop anything getting in the, vo in the valve box. I don't think we need to do that here. Uh, that looks like it might sit high, but once we get more mulch down here, it's gonna be all good. Uh, I've got a few more rocks available, but I might just backfill a little bit of sand in first, and then we'll just tip some more rocks in there. Or oh, sand, whatever that is. So we'll have a look inside and see how that's impacted what we've done. Not too bad. So we'll need to get another um, bag of Jürgen rocks and do that box but uh, you get the gist. So that's how to install your valve box. Uh, there's obviously a hundred different ways that people will do these things. And some people put rocks in the bottom, some people don't. Some people put pavers in the bottom, some people don't. You really just, the key with these valve boxes is being able to get access to your solenoid valves in the event that you need to do some maintenance work. So if something stops working, we've got a nice clear space. We can undo screws, take valves out, undo manifolds, remove valves. Even this, as it sits, probably is a little tight that way. Um, and it would have been nice to go that way, but we can get access to this pressure reducer filter. So if we need to take that out to, um, to get the stainless steel screen out or to just clean it out, we can. Uh, I'm going to get my watering can and just rinse everything off because I like to keep it clean. If you do have a photo of a really neat valve box installation, I'd love to see it. Um, send it into our Facebook or to our Instagram. We're at WaterProAU. Uh, and if it's uh, better than mine, I'll share it on the page. All right, that should be good enough. It's probably full of fertilizer, so I'm just about to make everything brown.
So that's obviously all waterproof, so what I'm doing is not doing anything, any harm. And there you go, you have a new looking valve box. That's it. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this. This is pretty much the end of the series of the irrigation as an installation process at my house. Uh, there's obviously going to be maintenance throughout the life of the irrigation. Um, so yeah, if you've enjoyed this, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Um, yeah, we're going to bring more of it. I'm not sure whose house we're going to be at next, um, but we, we're hoping that, uh, yeah, Duffy's house. We're going to irrigate his rental property. <laughs> uh, yeah, when Duffy buys a place, we'll go there and irrigate it. The, um, obviously, it's the start of the season in, in Australia now, so we're going to have a lot more content. We're going to have deep dives, which is something that we do where we go out and visit uh, a landscaped house similar to mine and talk to the landscaper about what they've done and, and the process and the design and all that, uh, and a lot more podcasts. So the full landscape is going to be back on this channel very soon. So if you're in the landscape industry or even just in general business um, and you're interested in finding out about how people are running their business and, and I guess more specifically to the landscape industry, subscribe to the channel um, or not, whatever makes you happy. Thanks for your attention. If you've got any questions, stick them in the comments below and I will see you soon.